As you'll recall, Mr. Richard Biggs, we recently met out in Miami at the big corporate tincture conference, and I just thought I wanted to connect you with my man, Konal Rosenbaum here. I thought maybe you could pitch him your vision and see if there might be some way we can work together and you know scale up to an industrial global size and, and just take this thing to the bank. So, I mean, as you know, I'm Richard Biggs. I want to hear about your product, Conal. I dig it, man. I can tell you all about it. We've actually got a lot of things that I could talk to you about, including output material, that kind of stuff. But I think usually the, the best way to begin is just telling you about the hardware that we produce. Lucille Labs makes a CO2 extraction hardware that's designed to be used on a smaller scale than, uh, than most other CO2 extraction hardware. Uh, where well, you're typically talking about a $250,000 unit. It's going to sit in a room and take about half the room. Uh, we've got three machines that are good for industrial, commercial, and then in the end it's going to be consumer use as well. Uh, the the UCF fountain top that we're really trying to pitch here. So wh what you're telling me is that you're allowing people to make their own things at home? Now why the heck would you do that? Yeah, this is a problem as far as I can tell, Connell, because you know, the, the whole pitch that I brought Mr. Biggs in here for is with this idea that we could take over the market and monopolize. And this kind of puts us at a disadvantage, uh, kind of showing our full hand here. Just if folks realize that they can make tinctures at home that are of a you know high quality, then I mean, what the hell are we going to need big tincture for? Like, My business is done if you come through. Yeah, you know, it does put us a little behind the eight ball, doesn't it? But I think that's the talk that we should have. It's exciting to put a little bit of onus in somebody's hands. And I think we'll always stand behind what the end consumer is actually available and able to do. But what I do think is that the numbers, the possible numbers we could spread as far as like the number of units potentially could be sold is where Mr. Biggs could come in really handy here with uh, helping us with distribution and that kind of thing. Well, I I'll tell you one thing right now. I we can make essential oils out of turpentine in, in our, our lab, so I don't know why the heck you're going to allow people to just take something off a plant and put it in a machine and get out a finished product. This is a big issue where I come from because, you know, they, they have the saying that this town ain't big enough for the both of us. So I feel like, you know, one of us is going to have to cave at a certain point if we're going to want to really do do the kind of units that we need to move with Mr. Biggs because, you know, I'll, I'll just be coming flat out and tell you when I meet with Mr. Biggs, first thing I told him is that I'm going to get your tincture into every Walgreens, every Vons, every Stater Brothers across the country. And now you're telling me that folks can just do that at home. And I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how we're going to make a shit ton of money for big tincture right now. So Connell, why don't you go ahead and tell Mr. Biggs a little bit about CO2 extraction? Because, you know, I hear that he's, he's using horse manure. I'm not sure how ethical that is. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of extraction out in the marketplace right now. A couple of them being uh, butane and propane. Uh, those have been around for yeah. quite a while. Uh, I know they're fairly popular in some circles, but they are, are uh, not, not always the best option, I'd say. CO2 is a very clean, ethical option as far as extraction goes. Hey, come on. Profits over people over here. Look, I, I totally understand your angle here, but what I like to talk about is, is a cleaner sort of uh, a way to get to the finished product and still preserve a lot of the of volatiles and different kind of flavors and, and terpene profiles that are within certain, you know, plants and, and herbs and those kind of things. Yeah, the only terpene I know is terpene time. I just try, how does your business model, you know, how are you supposing we're going to make money is all I want to know. The way it's going to work as far as our end goes, I figure is the, the, the long view is eventually, which if you look around, maybe it won't be the tinctures that are at Walgreens and those kind of things, but what I'd like is to see the fountain sitting on the shelf, let's just say at Bed Bath & Beyond, sitting right next to a soda stream or a Keurig, right? And it'll be sitting on the shelf, ready for somebody to come pick up and make their own thing at their own house. So that's that's the way to get distribution. That's the way the money's going to come in. And we can still keep everything nice and clean and to the point and healthy for the end consumer, which is what I really care about at the end of the day. Now, now we might be seeing something here. Now we're talking. So, so you're saying that I could sell pre-packed pods of botanicals to the end consumer to make their products, and I don't even have to employ anyone at my warehouse to make finished products? Yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. I tell you what, son, hats off to you. That's a done deal. How much you want? I got a blank check coming your way, baby. Hey, and along those lines, speaking of checks and, you know, the, the prime time and all that, uh, as discussed out in Miami when we met at that adults after party at the, at the adults uh, strip club, <clears throat> uh, I told you that I could get you on a Shark Tank. I know Kevin Harrington. We used to play tennis together, and we've got the same masseuse. Long story. But 
I can't get you on Shark Tank, but there is a much smaller network television show in Croatia that I've been able to line you up with an appearance on called Minnow Tank. Will that suffice for you, Mr. Biggs? Or, you know, are you ready for Minnow Tank? As long as the profits are there, you know I'll be there. So, Kano, really the last thing we got to touch upon at the moment before we sign on Mr. Biggs as our client is the, the per unit price of this at-home extraction fountain that we're dealing with today. And I told them that we could get them in with a first-time client bargain special of $3,200. Is that about? Is that what we're quoting these days, $3,200? You know, it's a pretty, pretty high number. I'd say we've been working our butts off to kind of get this price down to a more reasonable number for, for like I said, the end consumer, the everyday user person that might be living paycheck to paycheck that wants to do things on their own. So what we've done is we're going to introduce this, this, the fountain, the Usia fountain into the market at $899 price initially. But, but wait, there's more. What we can do right now for the first 200 early adopters is, is make it available for $200 less than that. And then what we're going to do is have you pay half now, which is $349.50, and then 12 payments of $29.15 will get you the unit in your hands and available within the next year. Um, so basically what we've done is we've made it a, a crowdsourcing sort of project to get everybody involved at a grassroots level, and then everybody feels like they're all a part of the building of this thing. We've all got that in common at the end of the day. Will these units be able to extract Red Bull as well? Yeah, yeah, we're going to need something strong. <laughs> I don't know about Red Bull. But I know that you can definitely decaffeinate coffee and end up with pure crystalline caffeine. It's also something that's fairly dangerous. We probably have to put it on the box. I, I like that. I like that a lot. It's like you got to use your imagination. Yeah, the sky's the limit. Take vanilla, for example. When you buy like name brand vanilla at the store in a concentrate bottle, uh, we've done some analytics on those units. And, and most of the time, there's no actual vanilla in the vanilla extract, which is what they call it. So, so when you find real vanilla extract that's actually been extracted from a real vanilla bean, it's way, way more expensive than the fake stuff is at the store. So with our hardware at UCL Labs, our customers can finally make the oil from raw material easily and safely at their home and then have real wholesome products to put into their bodies. Well, it's going to be hard to turn this offer down. I'll tell you what, Mr. Biggs, I know that you came in here thinking that I was going to get you hooked up with um, somebody who's going to be able to help us monopolize and Sadly, it appears to be the opposite of the story that I've just connected you with someone who's going to help you basically lose customers because uh, the end users are going to be able to do a lot of this stuff at home themselves for a very reasonable price and a very modest investment to, to start, especially if you're in the first 200 early adopters. So I, I, I have to say I'm sorry for the disappointment here, but I can still get you on Minnow Tank out in Croatia if you're interested. Uh, as long as profits are there, I'll be on Minnow Tank. I suppose I may have to extract myself from that relationship, Mr. Biggs. I apologize. Yeah, well, happens. Happens the best. All right, then. Well, um, I, I still can get you 20% off of the uh, the adults club that we mentioned. So, you know, let's just stay tuned on that, you know, because I feel like I see, I see a guy with a handlebar mustache, and I know where you're headed after this call. Vroom, vroom.